Welcome to BizTech's Health and Wellness Show, where we focus on equipping you with the knowledge on health and wellness to help to ensure a more productive and healthy life for yourselves, your families, and your employees. Now, today the conversation is about is addressing the pain points of an in-person clinical visit for stigmatized healthcare conditions. Now, to bring these insights, we have Sean Lowe. He's the founder of Ordinary Folk. Ordinary Folk is a Singapore-based telehealth startup that's dedicated to men's and women's health issues. Now, this is very interesting. Welcome to the show, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be on. Now, Sean, could you give us an overview first of Ordinary Folks and what inspired you to start this business and develop it? Yeah, um, you know, Ordinary Folks is a healthcare company and what we do essentially is to launch um, specialized healthcare ventures to tackle specific areas of care. Right. So the first one that we launched was NOAA for men's health. So NOAA is a men's telehealth platform um, specialized to target uh, men's health conditions, right? Um, such as sexual health conditions, EDPE, mental health, weight loss, the whole spectrum, right? Um, you know, and then we kind of launched Zoe right after that for women's health and fertility, right? So contraception, prenatal, you know, all the way up. And, and you know, for us, um, to answer the second part, um, you know, why, why we, you know, do what we do is essentially we believe that, you know, the one size fits all solution for healthcare doesn't really work, right? Um, you know, I think as a GP, when you're treating almost everything under the sun, you need to kind of standardize, right, the, the kind of patient journey, um, because it kind of makes sense to do so. But we feel that, you know, that leaves gaps in, in the healthcare system that, you know, that needs to be addressed, right? And, and we believe in, you know, personalizing patient journeys. Um, for each patient and each condition that they're, they're treating. Okay, and what is your footprint like uh, at the moment uh, besides mm. Singapore? Yeah, we, we launched in Hong Kong um, a couple of months ago and then we are on to our third country soon, but still in stealth. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, so I want to zoom in a little bit on mm. some of the issues that men's, men face, which mm. they're very reluctant to talk about in a traditional sense. So erectile yeah. dysfunction is one of them. Yes. And, and that's one of the things that that, that, uh, that yes. you, you, you offer in terms of solution uh, yeah. and premature e ejaculation as well. Yes. Tell us a little bit about how a telehealth solution like yours yeah. is able to help the ordinary person out there. Yes. Um, I think when you look at these conditions, um, we kind of drill down to about three main problems that all men would face. Right. Um, the first of all is cost. Right. Um, a lot of the conditions that we treat um, are not covered by health insurance. Right. So a lot of it is out of pocket spending. Right. Um, secondly, um, is the, the the inconvenience. Right. That all men face or anyone who has to go to the doctor. Right. Take time out. We're in the clinic. Um, but the third, right, which is probably going to be the most pertinent to all men, is stigma and embarrassment. Right. I think when you look at conditions like this, um, oftentimes. Um, as guys, you know, as men, we have a lot of ego, right? It's machismo, like, you know, <laughs> like you, you cannot, you know, like, and, and when you have ED or premature ejaculation, it's, it's straight to your manhood, right? You just feel less of a man, you know, like you don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Um, and so what we feel and what, what we believe and what we've done is that and we've created a platform to solve these issues, right? Um, by being a telehealth platform, um, you know, by being digital, we're able to reduce our fixed costs and process cost savings to our patients. Right? We're able to be more efficient um, you know, with our doctor's time as well, it reduces costs. Um, so we solve the affordability part. We deliver medication in a really uh, non-discreet packaging to our patient's house within two to four hours, right? So they don't have to leave the home, right? Everything's done digitally. Everything can be done online, anywhere. We have patients who did their consults in gym toilets, right? So like we've kind of, you know, created a, a, a platform um, and a system where it's super easy for you to get consultation. And lastly, with stigma, what we do is, you know, we have to develop a dynamic health assessment for doctors, right, and our urologists. And what this does is it takes um, questions that the doctor have to ask you face to face, the necessary questions, put them online, right? You answer them, and then um, you do your consult. So the whole consultation experience is a lot more comfortable. You're no longer answering questions like, oh, how you know, like how how strong are your erections, how fast you ejaculate, right? The consultation is more about the treatment, how it works. You know, what kind of specific areas that you want to answer. So that's kind of how we plan to, uh, that's how we tackle these three uh, problems. Okay. Mm. Sounds good in theory, but in practice, and my mm. research has, uh, for this interview, has, has told me this, um, erectile dysfunction and premature ejaculations 
are often not just medical issues, yeah. but they are actually a lot of times relationship related. They could be stress mm. and anxiety related, and they could be dietary related as well. So mm. how does you, how do you, when you simplify the whole process, take care of these? Because otherwise all you're doing is then simplifying the issue and the prescription or mm. is, a, is a pharmaceutical. It mm. may not necessarily need pharmaceuticals to solve the problem. Yeah. So that's where the dynamic health assessment comes in. So it, it's actually pretty comprehensive and it actually covers more questions than what a normal GP will ask you during a, a face-to-face -face consult. So we ask you about your psychological profile, your weight, your BMI, and your blood, your medical history. Um, so we ask you a full spectrum and then we kind of provide services to kind of cover that. So not all consultation with our doctors ends with a prescription. Sometimes it ends with a referral to our psychologist. So we have clinical psychologists on our platform as well to tackle the uh, mental health aspect, right? And we also have weight loss, uh, prescription weight loss treatments um, that our doctor will refer out to patients who are a bit, you know, you know, just a bit more overweight. Um, so that it's, it's not, it doesn't always end with like an ED medication. So it's really, um, we, we believe in kind of tackling health in a more holistic manner, um, which is why we have all the different options. Okay, and, mm. and so by doing this, how mm. do you compete then with other digital platforms who are offering similar services, but perhaps a wider, wider breadth of services? Yeah, so I, I think for us, um, you know, when you look at, you know, I guess other platforms who are in what we call like GP online, right? You know, it's just, you know, doing a GP, um, I know as, as I allude, alluded to earlier, um, you know, I think that's like a pretty one size fit all solution, right? Um, because when you're treating everything under the sun, like, you know, you, you can't specialize your, your patient journeys at all, right? Um, you know, you have to standardize the journey. So um, for us, we believe that by, you know, focusing only on men's health, right, in particular, uh, we're able to really create a patient journey. So each, you know, patient journey is really tailored to the customer. Okay. Hmm. And, and so the other thing that's also uh, a big concern uh, among men is male pattern baldness. So oh. I'm one of those who suffers from that. Yes. Um, tell us how you help patients then from an online perspective as compared yeah. to, compared to the, as opposed to the physical physical visits and so forth. Yeah, so for us, you know, like Helos is, you know, and, and alopecia, right, is, is one of the, you know, a huge area for us to, to solve as well. And um, one of the issues with, with you know, Helos medication is just expensive. Right, um, it's just straight up really, really expensive. And what we do through our platform is kind of bring that cost savings. Number one, I think number two, um, with Helos especially, um, in the market, there's a lot of um, a lot of noise. Right, um, you yes. don't really know what kind of treatment is out there. You know, you got other <laughs> random stuff coming to you. And I think what we have done is to really take a really scientific approach towards all our treatments. Right, so we only do prescription based, HSA approved. You know, like you know things that are like medically, um, backed. Right. Um, so there's no like random herb in our stuff and, <laughs> and things like that. Right. And we don't touch an arm and leg um, for, for things like that. Yeah. So, so for us, we, we, we believe that, you know, like um, it, it, hair loss is, you know, despite all the noise, it's actually a very simple solution. It's actually, you know, one that's medically proven um, and we want to offer that. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to go and try and take a look and see what, <laughs> what you can help us with. But now, <laughs> Moving away from men's challenges in health to women's challenges. So this is where Zoe comes in. So yes. you started uh, Zoe afterwards. Tell mm. us about Zoe and what you take care of. Yeah, um, for Zoe, you know, our, our plan before even we started, Noah was always to do men's and women's, right? It's just timing it. Um, and for Zoe, the, the plan is really to tackle, um, you know, fertility and women's sexual health, right? So because I think in men's health conditions, oftentimes, we as men, we judge ourselves, right? Oh, we're less of a man, you know, we're ED, we're shameful. But for women's health conditions, especially in Asia and, 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 and Singapore sometimes that we have found is that it's other people judging you, right? You know, we've heard so many stories, you know, 27-year-old going get birth control and the doctor's like, you know, like judging you, getting plan B, right? And then you're like 28 and the doctor's like, oh, do your parents know about, you know, like you getting like emergency contraception? You'd be like, I'm 28. And <laughs> like, what do I kind of need? You know, my so, so it's, you know, they, they are kind of like, I, we, we feel like the profile is a bit different where women are like, yeah, I, I can't, I'm proud, you know, I'm owning my body, I'm owning my kind of sexuality, but it's, it's the society, right? It's, it's the healthcare system that's kind of like judging upon them. So, this kind so of it, like, it, 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 obviously you're empowering women to take control over their own bodies. Yeah, 
yeah, and and you know, I, I think they are already right, and we we want to provide a solution where that's in line with with you know their their what what they believe in, yeah. And and so the other things are also around hair and skin as well as well being in terms of weight loss. And I I saw an interesting thing called smoking cessation. Now that doesn't appear in in Noah, but that's in Zoe. Tell us about that. Oh, it, it's both. Um, oh, it's so both. It, okay. it is in both, and 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 for smoking cessation, I mean. Smoking causes cancer, right? And I think, um, you know, especially as, as a lot, it actually stems from a lot of our patients, existing patients, where we ask them, what are some of the health areas that you want to, you need help on? And smoking often tend to come up, right? Um, it's one of the things where I say, I want to quit, especially when they're hitting their 30s, when they want to get pregnant, um, you know, where they're looking to get kid, um, you know, they're like, I want to I kind of quit. So can you guys help me? And that kind of stems from that, that patient need, that, which is why we kind of worked on that. Okay. And mm. weight loss is obviously on both sides as well. That's a critical part. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of solutions out there. And it's another area where there is a lot of noise. So there are, you know, yeah. if you think about the traditional beauty salon treatment to, yeah. to now more scientific approaches, yeah. where do you fit in in this spectrum? We, we only do prescription medication for weight loss, right? So, so like you rightly said, there's a lot of like, you know, fats and diets and, you know, like whole stuff around that. Um, we want to strip away all of that. What is medically proven? What's, you know, what's prescription based? What's, you know, government approved, HSA approved um, treatments that our doctors can back. And then we do, we do only that. And funny enough, actually weight loss was the thing, one of the things that we did in the pandemic, right? During the pandemic at the height, we had so many requests. Um, and then we were like, all right, let's look at what's the kind of solution that we can provide. And that's kind of how we started on weight loss. Um, yeah, and, and I think for us at the end of the day also, when you look at some of the conditions that we treat, they often are pretty symptomatic. What I mean by that is they're always often sometimes caused by other conditions. Right? So if you're finding you're, you're really obese, you know, you have diabetes, type 2, um, you know, sometimes it could cause ED, right? So we're not just trying to solve the, you know, the, the, the final problem, but we are also now trying to take a step forward to kind of do towards more, move towards more preventive medication as well. Mm. Okay, could you just give us an idea of where you're at as a business, I mean, what sort of consultations do you do? What kind of revenues do you have right now? And, and yeah. who uses you? What does your customer profile look like? Yeah, so we, I, we can't share revenue numbers we don't share, um, but um, we have over 50, 60,000 people on our platform right now, right? In a, in a really short space of time. Um, we, when you say 50, 60,000, what does that mean? Is, is registered that, users. Registered, so registered users. Registered okay. users, yeah. Okay. Registered users on our platform. Um, and, and and still growing. I'm um, growing quite a bit each month. Um, and so how many consultations would you do a month? Uh, digital consultations. Oh, more than a thousand, probably. Okay. Um, you know, at this stage. Um, yeah, definitely more than a thousand. Yeah, at this stage. So and and you know, Hong Kong, we just launched. So it's kind of, that's kind of ramping up as well. So okay. we really kind of expect that number to grow. Um, yeah. Yep. And and. Uh, uh, in, in terms of um, uh, growth wise, you are looking to, you've just raised a 5 million funding round. How are you going to deploy this capital? Yeah, so for us, I think, um, you know, with Singapore, we want it to be as a CD based um, cash flow positive over the next two years, right? Um, that's, our, that's our goal. Um, at least for me personally, I don't believe in burning cash just for top line growth. I think the market, you know, I just don't believe that. Um, um, so for us, it's, it's really doubling down on Singapore and, you know, we have more um, areas of care that we're looking to target, right? And, and that's kind of where the capital will go. Hong Kong as well is, is, a, is a city that we're committed to and we're looking to build out our whole, you know, suite of services there. And we're also launching the third market, right? Um, you know, in the coming one to two months. Okay. Yeah. And, mm. and um, looking ahead also in the mm. region, what are some key trends in digital healthcare and how are you going to take advantage of that? Yeah, I, I think um, when you look at about two to three years ago, even four years ago, I think you kind of see the first wave, right, of telehealth in, in, in Singapore and in Asia and South Asia where you have a lot of doctors online, just GPs online, right, wave one um, telehealth platforms. But I think um, we were the first in Singapore and, you know, since then, I think you see around the region there are more specialized healthcare brands. Our, our companies, right, to target specific areas of care. And I believe that over the next one or two years, that's going to be even more of the case, right? Um, and I think um, you'll see more um, healthcare companies um, just really focusing on just very specific areas, like diabetes, even, you know, pathology, things like that. And 
I also would think that the wave one telehealth um, tend to go in a more omni-channel strategy as well. So it's no longer just you know digital. Now they're going to have their own you know physical clinics. You know they want to you know have a mix of both. So I think it'll be quite interesting time to see over the next two to three years different models that are kind of um, coming out. Right. And along with that, you know, you have e-pharmacies, you know, you have the whole suite um, behind telehealth, right? I think telemedicine is really just the beginning of digital healthcare in this region. Mm. Sean, it's been a fascinating conversation, but before we leave, any mm. final words you'd like to leave us with? Yeah, um, if you have any conditions that we treat, <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can always visit our sites i'll show you is it's, it's very discreet and it's affordable <laughs> and, and yeah if anything just reach out to me um my 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 contacts are always open for all feedback yeah so sean thank you very much for taking your time to be on the show thank you i'm brian fernandez and we've been speaking to sean Lowe, the founder of ordinary folk on biztax health and wellness show this video and podcast will be on our social media platforms as well as our website www.biztax.asia please like and subscribe to our various platforms. Thanks again for tuning in.